Hey everybody, so I want to take you through some developments that have happened with RetroArch. I released a video some days back announcing that RetroArch had been released for the Arcade Stick Pro. A few days after that, there was a binary that was released, which is basically the source code compiled and ready to, to use. And then there was a Neo Geo Mini uh, source for uh, RetroArch was released. And then the uh, binary was released for that. And now, just a few days ago, uh, RetroArch was released for the MVSX. So I want to show you that. It's here on GitHub. I'll have the link to in the description below to this uh, GitHub. And it'll take you here to the wiki. Uh, all you'll have to do is click here on the pre-compiled binary installation. Click on that. And it actually mentions all the three releases. For the Arcade Stick Pro, the Neo Geo Mini, and the MBSX. I'm going to focus a little bit of time today on this, on the MBSX, and I guess it would, it would work for the Neo Geo Mini as well. Basically, I'm going to show you how to install it. I don't have an MBSX, but I can definitely take you through the steps. <clears throat> In all cases, you do have to have your system rooted, which basically means that your hardware needs to be hacked. The only hack that I'm aware of for the Neo Geo Mini, MBSX, and the Arcade Stick Pro is the Hilo hack, or Hilo Stick. So you will have to have that applied. Now there are various sources online. Um, there's people that have put up the uh, Hilo, Hilo Stick X online on the uh, Internet Archive without the ROMs, without anything else. It's just the, uh, the shell. But it does have that update file that will allow you to root your system which is what you're going to need here if you already have the hilo hack then you're ready to go i'll say that the mvsx and the neo geo mini versions of retroarch are probably the easiest to use not the prettiest but the easiest um, but i think it works in terms of uh complementing your your library all right so when you're here on this on this git we're going to go to mbsx that release and it shows here the the zip file for it the source and all that so you're going to want to download that zip file once you do you'll have this right here this retroarch mbsx uh it's probably yeah beta 2 and it's got the date, so you'll want to just go ahead and open it up. And it'll have a folder that's named the exact same name as the zip file. Open that up. Now this is all the information. This is the stuff that you're going to need. So this boot usb.sh, that's important. That's basically your launcher. You're going to launch that. That's going to end up launching RetroArch for you. Then you've got the RetroArch folder and the ROMs folder. Obviously nothing in here, it just says add your ROMs here. RetroArch though, it's got everything, it's, it's basically the whole system. Inside the bin folder, this is pretty much, um, you don't really need any of this. Maybe that RetroArch, I'm not sure if that gets used, I'm sure it does in the boot USB. Um, but really what's important to you all, it's going to be the BIOS. You have to have BIOS files in here, namely for like the CD-based systems. Neo Geo requires that Neo Geo zip. Uh, Polygame Master System, so PGM games will require the PGM zip. Various other emulators or cores require certain BIOS files. Um, what I'm going to show you today though doesn't require any of those things. So you can actually leave this blank. And all you're going to need to take a look at is your cores. So for, for what I'll be testing today, I'm only going to use this MAME 2000 core. And it's already there. So you have everything you need. The only thing you're going to need to do is get yourself your game files that you're going to test. So for my demonstration today, the reason why I mentioned how I think this RetroArch, the way this system is set up, it's really nice. Because it's going to complement your library. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of content that you currently have on MVSX. 
thanks to the the Hilo hack, right? Um, but there's some games that just aren't working, don't run too well, uh, or don't allow you to add coins and actually play the game. So that's really what I'm going to focus on. So I'm going to demonstrate Sunset Riders, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, and X Men. So X-Men, I think, is a game that it currently does run, but it plays, uh, the sound isn't so great, right? So I'm going to give you an example of what you how you can use RetroArch to complement your current library on the MVSX. All right. So really, it's just knowing the cores, understanding that you do have to have BIOS files in here, should you decide to run PlayStation, Sega CD, uh, PCFX, uh, those type, uh, Neo Geo CD, those, those systems. But really, you have this RetroArch folder, and then you have a ROMs folder. So in the ROMs folder, this is where you'd want to do some things, right? So um, like I'm just going to create a folder. I'm going to call it MAME2000. And then in that folder is where I would put some games to test, all right? Now, I already have a USB stick that's ready to go, and I'm going to take you to that in a, in a moment. So this boot usb.sh file needs to be in the root of your USB drive. RetroArch folder needs to be in the root and ROMs. So imagine this is the root of your drive, which is basically no, no folders. You just drop this straight into your USB drive. So you're going to be using one of the launch mechanisms on your application's uh, selection menu, which is basically the, uh, the splash screen that comes up that's, that offers you uh, some options, MVSX, Hilo Stick X, uh, Capcom Play System, right? Currently, I think those are the three options that you have. So you're going to be using one of those launchers. It won't be MVSX, obviously, so probably Hilo Stick X is what's going to launch it. So in theory, I mean, you could have this with your USB drive that has uh, your, um, your Neo Geo content or your Hilo Stick X content or rather your MVSX H folder. You could do that. It's not going to serve you any purpose other than launching RetroArch though. So I would recommend that you just kind of have a different USB drive when you want to launch um, RetroArch. Because that, U that boot USB.sh file, once you launch Hilostick X, if it finds this file, it's going to automatically supersede anything else. So as long as you have that file in there, you're always going to launch RetroArch. And you, you do have to have those folders there too. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get... Oh, wait, uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and then we're going to move over to the actual uh, demonstration. All right, so this screen should look familiar to all of you on the MVSX and also Neo Geo Mini. Um, but again, I'm really focusing on MVSX right now because I think that's the newest release. And I think there's still a lot of confusion on how to get this thing running and working. I just haven't seen a lot of um, a lot of chatter about it. So I really just want to kind of show you how you can get things started. So this is your this is your menu, your main menu that you're gonna see on your MVSX. So you have the those files that I just showed you on your USB drive. You load that in or you you know stick that into your MVSX unit, you fire it up, and then I think when you launch MV um Hilo Stick X, it'll take you straight to this because again that USB.sh uh, file is a launcher that takes you straight into RetroArch. All right, so now that you're here, let's go ahead and take a look at some things. So there's you know there's some options here. You do have uh playlists and settings. Um different different options but if this is like your first time and let's say you found some games that you wanted to try and you know what core they run off of so like MAME 2000 right that's easy enough to do some searching and try and find you know a ROM set or some files that that work with MAME 2000 to test so that's what I'm doing so again we're going to focus on Sunset Riders, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time and X-Men so you've put those files into your, however you want to call it. You can put it straight into the ROMs folder, but if you're going to be testing multiple cores, I would recommend that you organize yourself, set up different folders so that it's easier to navigate and find 
the files that you're wanting to try. It's possible that you'll try the same uh, file or game image for multiple cores though. So it's important to know which is the right game file for the right core. So main 2000 might be a different set than main 2003 or main for all or final burn alpha might be different than FBA 2012. Um, maybe you're trying one particular game and, and it's called uh, game.zip, but Sega CD has a game.zip and so does PlayStation has a game.zip. Uh, which they won't, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that it, it's really important that you organize yourself as you're testing through, going through this test phase of, of running some games. So like I said, your your library currently is already pretty big. This is going to be, I think, suitable to complement what you currently have. Maybe additional games that aren't possible on, on the Hilo hack. Now you can try some different stuff. Arcade games that don't run well, through Final Burn or even MAME cores, maybe you can figure out how to make them run through PlayStation and they run they run decent enough to, to enjoy. So there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, so again, we're gonna just take you through those games that I mentioned. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna definitely wanna figure out what all your buttons, how they're mapped and all that. So you're gonna have to do some exploring but really, you got to enter. So you're going to find the button that, that enters the selection. So the first thing you want to do is load the core. And you got to remember the directory, right, where things are. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about that. So HDisk is your USB drive. So we're going to click into HDisk. Oops, I exit, sorry. So we're going to go into HDisk. And then there's the RetroArch folder. And again, if you look at the top, we're loading the core. All right, so that's what that's what we're in the middle of doing. So I'm going to go into the RetroArch folder, and it's just kind of like a, a file explorer, right? You're just surfing through all your folders. We're going to go into cores, and I'm looking for MAME 2000. So there's MAME 2000. I'm going to select that. Now I'm back to the main menu. Now I want to load content. This is where you're going to find the game files that you want to test. So even here, you can go into favorites. You can explore. I don't know what any of that's going to do. I'm not messing with any of that. I want to go to this mount slash H disk, which is, again, this is basically your USB drive. So I'm going to click into that. And then I'm going to go to the ROMs folder because that's where stuff's at, right? And as you can see, I've got a lot of folders that are already set up. And we're, we're looking for MAME 2000. So I'm going to click into MAME 2000. I'm looking for Sunset Riders. That's going to be the first one that we try. So there's Sunset Riders. I'm going to go ahead and uh, select that game. Now you can load the archive. That's how you launch the game. So that's what we're going to do. And the suggested core is MAME 2000. So it's already set up because that's what we loaded already, or we selected. So we're going to go ahead and uh, enter that. And once you do this, now it's going to launch the game. So the main thing here is that you're going to be able to actually start the game, right? Because you're currently able to launch the game. I don't have sound. Hold on. Um, you currently don't have the capability of actually playing the game, but you can watch all this, right? So, again, you'll have to play with your buttons and figure out what the coin button is. And you can get started on the game. So there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit or pull up the menu. And again, you're gonna have to figure out what button is mapped to that on your MVSX. But basically you're gonna get back into your quick menu. And right here where it says close content, that's where you actually close the current game. So it's like exiting the game, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select to close content. Once you do that, it takes you back to your main menu, and now you you start over. So again, you're going to load the core, go into H disk, that's your USB drive, go into RetroArch, go down to cores, enter that. Let's select main 2000. 
Now we're going to load the content. Go down to mount H disk. Go to ROMs. Select your whatever folder you decide, or if it's right there out in the open, then that's what you're going to use. And look for the game that you're trying to test now. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We're going to load it and launch with MAME 2000. Now again, these videos have been longer than, than what you might be used to seeing from me because most of them have been like teasers or trailers. Uh, these are more instructional now, just to try and help you to get started. So there's the game, which again, I'm sure this is nothing new to you. You've seen this before, but you're not able to, to play the game. So I picked a... I picked a, per a, a file that doesn't allow me to select the multiple characters, but again, this was just a quick demonstration. So you, through RetroArch, you should be able to um, to play the game. You just have to figure out where the how the buttons are all mapped. So I, again, I exited or I loaded up the menu. That's a different button. I'm going to close content. And then back to square one, so we're going to load a core. Again, you're going to go to HDisk, RetroArch, go down to cores, select main 2000, load content. 